All right, guys, what is up? Welcome to episode number 57. That's 57 of the Good Point Row podcast. My name is Caden. This is my little bro, Cam. Don't sleep. Don't sleep, baby. We're going to get right into it today. So how today's is going to work is we're going to go over every game that's happened so far, every series, predictions, whatever we want to talk about. We'll go through in the ones that we don't really care about for two minutes. A couple ones that we do care about, but not much to say. Three minutes. Two of the best ones to us. Five minutes. We'll move on to our predictions for today's game. Specifically, it's Monday, April 16th. And then we'll follow that up with Western Conference bracket predictions and a clip. So stay and see that clip. I'm not going to tell you what it's about. You'll have to wait and see. You know what's crazy about that it's April 16th and two months yeah, it was be game day. six of the finals. It's ridiculous how long that playoffs is. It's great, though. It's good for us. Good for I business. mean, it's good, but I'm saying, like, that's crazy. It's good for business. Their season's literally from October to, like, yeah, June knows. if you play in the finals. It's like hockey, too, though. Yeah. But I'm just saying, like. It's so long. All right, Boss Master. Our boy Jamie back there is going to get us started with the two minutes. That's fine. We're good. Yeah, we're good. All right, first up, we got the 76ers and the Nets. Oh, you're mad because it made noise. All right, we're going to start with the 76ers and the Nets. Joe Embiid looked fine. It looks like a pretty easy series. James Harden was seven threes his first game. That's a good sign because he's going to need a ball out yeah. for them to go to the finals, which we'll get into our predictions later, but I have – High hopes for the Sixers. Um, this is a sweep. I think it's a gentleman's. <laughs> I think. The you Nets think the Nets get a game? I think the Nets Mikel get a Bridges game at home. drops fifty-five, and the Nets get a game. I think. The, I think the Nets get a game at home. <laughs> I don't think so. I now think this is a sweep. It could be, but I'll, I'll say uh, we can get that in a second. But I think there's another team that looks more dominant against their opponent than them. No, I knew. I literally was about to say that the Sixers look the most dominant against their opponent more than any other uh, series. But well. Okay, well, that, that, there's that take. But also, James Harden, can he shoot that consistently from three because of how inconsistent he shot from everywhere else, free throw line and two-pointers? I mean, Joel Embiid so if only— he, if he doesn't shoot that good from three— He did have 13. He had one he other He did have, goal. like, 13 assists, and he's going to do that every single yeah, game. Yeah, he had 13 assists, but so did Chris Paul. Like, I think the 76ers, their starting lineup is the best in the Eastern They're Conference. They're deep. Like, I, no, I think their starting lineup is the best in the Eastern Conference. I think the Bucks and the Celtics' depth is better. Depth? Yeah, but the Sixers have the best starting lineup. The Sixers got some depth, too, though. No, they, they're all great teams, but yeah. My thing with the Sixers, I would say the Bucks had a better lineup, but after that Heat game, it's hard to say. They disappointed me, which is, we can get into that in a second as well. Yeah, we'll get into um, that. Dang, it's hard not to jump around. It is. Yeah, but I, I mean, I got, I got nothing else on this series besides I think it's a sweep. Good well, for yeah, it's, it, think about how much more exciting it would have been if Kevin Durant was still on the Nets. It'd be a completely different series. Oh, like if Katie and Kyrie? Yeah, yeah. But there's, well, not even Kyrie, yeah. just KD. I mean, the Suns and Clips is a great series, but yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm just talking about this specific series. All right, that's time for that one, so we're going to move over into the Celtics and Hawks. Um, that's why That's why these are two minutes, guys. Yeah. I mean, that, that's gentlemen's, an absolute... This is a gentleman's sweep. No, that's sweep. four games. Oh, you think this yes. is a sweep? I think that is a gentleman's sweep, because like, the Hawks have potential to go off one game and just hit every single three. Trey Young could go crazy, and they win one game. Like, Trey Young's the type of player where he can control a game enough where he can win you one game. Maybe, like but he goes off. The, the pace. Plus, you know Tatum has games where he goes freaking 7 for that's 25. Fine. Because gonna, that's how deep the Celtics 15. are. Jalen Brown will, go, will drop 40 that game. That's the thing about it, bro. Jalen Brown is very – if if Jason Tatum's a 10, Jalen Brown's a 9.8. Yeah. Like, he's, su- he's getting underrated. So I'm not worried he's about it. Underrated. I mean, I'm he really averaged not. 27 and shot better from the field than Tatum did this year. Right, so, and then I mean, well, Tatum averaged close to 30, though, didn't he? 30.1, yeah. He was the first Celtics player to ever average 30 in a season. Really? Yeah, but, I mean, that's, that's still, like. Out of all the years yeah. of Celtics legends. Bird was, like, a 28, 29. 29 point, like, nine was his best year, Bird. So, he basically averaged 30. When he won MVP. He won three straight MVPs without yeah. scoring 30 once. Yeah. That well, would I never mean, happen today. His opponent was Magic, who only dropped, like, 18 a game. But at, like, you know, 30. Well-rounded. Which, that's funny, because the 70s, they scored a lot of points. The 80s, he won his MVP. Yeah, sorry, the 80s, they scored a lot of points. Yeah, they did. So, that, that's surprising. But he had the God squad, so. The Celtics? The average, like, yeah. Yeah. That team was retarded. Yeah. Every Celtics team ever. Celtics and Lakers just have these, like, where they have. Monster, had monster basically teams. Basically, super teams. all the great players yeah. are on those teams. Yeah. To I, me, I the, if that was from to me the KG Celtics, they underachieved. Underachieved? Yeah. yeah. They only won one title. Anything is possible. And, you know, LeBron joined the Heat. That was 20, 2009? They beat them like three straight times. Or 2010. 2008, they won. 
against the uh, Lakers. So yeah, they they underachieved for sure. They won their first oh, they beat year. Kobe. They won their first year together. They went from twenty nine wins to like sixty three wins, which is the biggest jump in oh, wow. NBA history. That's crazy. And then the Kobe team they beat, I guess, was um, for his third straight. He would have won three straight titles. They beat Kobe right when he got pal. Oh, so he Kobe won two after. Yeah. Kobe, All right, Kobe moving two over two. from that game, Knicks and Cavs. This is tough. Oh man, I I think the Knicks win in seven. You do? It's yeah. close. Yeah, I think that I like the Cavs in seven. I I know. Remember how high I was on Darius Garland before the year? I'm disappointed in that man. He needs to start stepping up because he he could be one of the best shooters in the NBA. He he has one of the best jump shots. He's going to be a great player still, I think. But with his lack of development this year, I think that the Knicks, you know, with Julius Randle and uh, Jalen Brunson's balling the way he's balling, and they have better depth. I think that the the Knicks taking a seven. And why is Osman guarding Jalen Brunson? I don't understand that. Yeah, I think that, that they'll make adjustments insane. in the game too. That's another reason I think the Cavs, like, you're right. But to take one on the road first game, that's huge. Like, a lot of times in those series, it's like who gets game one wins that series. Yeah, maybe, but I, I could I could see the Cavs winning one in, in New York too. Yeah, I think I think that, yeah, it's going to be back games, in New so York. they're going to win a, a road so, game. Right, they only have to win one, two, right? Yeah. They're, they're the four. The Cavs are the four? The Cavs are the four. They have they have yeah. court. But so, now they don't, which is huge. Now they're even, huh? Yeah. Three and three. Mm-hmm. I so, don't know, man. So you're saying that the Knicks don't have to lose. And if you watch that game, the Knicks were in control of the game. The Cavs just made right, a that, push. Oh, yeah. So what I was going to say and is. And the Knicks I responded, just, which is, like, says a lot about their squad. Also, Julius Randle's kind of streaky, too. Yeah, but he's not the guy, that. though. RJ he's Barrett's streaky, too. Jalen Brunson's not the guy. Jalen Brunson's the guy? What are you talking about? He averaged 25 this year. So did Julius Randle. Yeah, but no, J- but he doesn't have the ball in his hands. He got better because he has a great point guard now. Right. He's better. But he's still the guy. Yeah, no, he's not the guy. The guy is Jalen Brunson. He's the number one Who option. Who carried them at the end of the game? Right, you but the game? Julius Randle's the number one option. Jalen Brunson carried them home. Jalen Brunson's the guy. Get out of here. I'm surprised this is a four. Don't hit me with Julius Randle's the guy. Oh. He does the dirty work. Timberwolves slash Nuggets. Um, yeah, so the Nuggets won. They played well, it seemed like, without – what's his name even playing Jokic. well? Yeah, Jokic. Jokic. Um, without Jokic, Jokic even Jokic. playing well. So, that's kind of a, a – that's a scary sight for the rest of the West. Yeah. I that's mean, a scary sight for the Timberwolves because I thought they were going to push them to seven. Which the Timberwolves, it looked like they shot terrible. This is probably the one game that I didn't watch, so it's really hard for me to talk on. Yeah. We watched, like, the first start where they started about the same 16 to 15 – um, and then we turned it off because it was that boring. It's, just and highlights. it's also at 9 o'clock, and for good reason, because nobody wants to watch it. <laughs> I'm serious. I don't care about that series. I agree. I think the Nuggets, if they don't win in 7 it, or in 4, it's like at that point they're just they're gonna win. Their, they're going to win in 5. Right? They're going to win in 5. In 5? Yeah. They're gonna win Gentlemen, five. Yeah. so you think that the Sixers are more likely to sweep than the Nuggets? Absolutely. The Timberwolves can get a game. The Timberwolves are a way better team than the Nets. Well, then, yeah. I can see that. At some point, Anthony Edwards has to have a game where he makes shots. Yeah, what's up with him, bro? <laughs> he's not a good shooter. He's he's a lot like – I still I think he's going to be a great player because he's just a freak. And a lot of times, freak athletes take a while to get their jump shot going in the NBA. So, uh, yeah. The, the he's NBA, a young, he's a young the thing cat. about the NBA is it's definitely a vets league. It's it's a vets league. Yeah, it's like a Jordan, league. it took Jordan what nine yeah. seasons. LeBron, it took him seven. No, it took LeBron. It took Jordan. He won in his eighth year. LeBron in his ninth. LeBron was just younger because he. I'm talking about when school. he went to the finals. Or he skipped until he went to the finals. This is LeBron's fourth year when he went okay, to the finals. Okay, so four. So that's quick for LeBron. Yeah. But uh, I think so far, what is it? Jason Tatum's early five, like season five, he took him to the finals. And Jason Tatum, so Jason Tatum's, that, Jason Tatum's like the year earliest last year. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Jason Tatum's like the earliest, but beyond that. It's going to take some time. Like, even if they And heat, they lost. Right, and they lose. Dwayne Wade was the guy Two that vets. was, like, 22 and won the finals against the Mavericks with the right. Heat. And that's probably the last time I can think of that that happened, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I can't think of anyone else. Yeah, it's a Vets league. That's why Dirk won. Yeah. Vets win. Yeah. Vets Expe- yeah. In the playoffs. Yeah. Experience. All right, moving over into our first five-minute section. We're going to go ahead and talk about the Lakers and Grizzlies. Yeah, you think you got five I'm, minutes on this one, buddy. Yeah, uh, talking about depth and experience, the Lakers have that over the Grizzlies right now, with uh, Stephen Adams and Brandon Clark out, and John Morant with his hand. All the momentum is to the Lakers, which I 
thought like that's why I didn't know why Vegas didn't favor the Lakers because of just their experience. Like yeah. LeBron's only lost one time in the first round in his whole career, and that was when Anthony Davis went down two to one. Maybe they were just factoring in health. I think they were factoring. But I thought health, the Lakers were the favorite all just the way. Just overall fatigue after playing recently. Um and then obviously the home court for the Grizzlies. The Grizzlies have a rough atmosphere. You could tell through the TV. Yeah. They have a pretty but, rough atmosphere. But the for me, what I saw was is the Lakers came out strong. No turnovers in the first quarter. They got tired, started committing turnovers in the second quarter. LeBron did. Especially LeBron. <laughs> yeah. And then they cleaned it up a little bit in the third. And then in the fourth, they pretty much yeah. wiped it up. Yeah. Then the other thing I noticed is this. Close game, back and forth. Like somebody would make a run and then the other person would make a run yeah. back and tie it. Or it would just go bucket for bucket until Jaw goes down. And then, you know, Hachimura obviously went off. But Jaw goes down and the Lakers go on a 15-0 run. Yeah. And it was it was wraps after that. So th- that's got to be something that you take into consideration. If Jaw doesn't play, this series is wraps for me. Oh, yeah. It's starting five. Now, Maybe Jaron six. Jackson, he looks nice, but he can't do it by he himself. He can't do it by himself. And Anthony Davis is going to – remember, Anthony Davis was out for a little bit too. With his arm, so he's gonna be able to contain Jaron Jackson. Um, I think that the Lakers have just a great path to the Western Conference Finals now, because I think they're gonna beat the Grizzlies. Because I think Jaw's not gonna be able to come back with his hand. Because if you watch the post game interview, he sounded like super defeated. Like they they were like, "Yeah, the good news is the X rays came back negative," and he was like, "Yeah, it's still like gonna affect me basically." Yeah. So I think that the Lakers have this have this in the bag. Yeah. So let's say this. Jaw let's say Jaw's hurt. So let let's say this. The Lakers win four or five, maybe even six games, let's say four or five games. The Warriors, let's say they have a struggled series and they go seven with the Kings. Yeah. Even if they win that series, you could be facing a tired Warriors team and a fresh Lakers team, which yeah. they need and desperately. They need to, to be, be fresh because they're a veteran team. Right. So that's huge. Like, when you're a veteran team, you'd rather have rest. When you're a younger team, kind of you want to keep playing and playing and playing. Which is another thing I was thinking but, of. If yeah. the Suns continued this with the Clippers and they go seven games. So even if the Nuggets went out, let's say they go seven, and then the first yeah. in the first round they go seven, and the second round against the Nuggets, they're tired, they go seven again, they win yeah. that. Now they're in the Western Conference Finals playing 14 games already. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's – There's a good chance that even the teams factors, yeah. that Lakers that the Lakers do play are so gassed by the time they yeah. play them, it, it strongly benefits the yeah. Lakers. And, you know, the Eastern Conference Finals is going to be a dog fight. Whoever comes out of the East, that's going to be a dog fight. Like, that's yeah. going to seven games. But, anyways – Even the, Grizzlies, the Bucks right now look like they yeah, might go seven. The Grizzlies with the Heat, maybe. I mean, never count out playoff Jimmy. I mean, my goodness. But, anyways, um, the Grizzlies made a huge mistake by letting LeBron win – the first game because he's 29 and two in his career in series after he wins the first game. Yeah. And he's still in, and, and you could tell like this is game one LeBron because he was feeling out the game, getting everybody involved. He wasn't super aggressive. Only took what? 15 shots, 16 shots. I think it was eight for 16. Mm-hmm. So he's going to be more aggressive and better as the series goes on. But even when he loses the first game, he's still 12 and nine. Yeah. He, so, it's going to be still, tough. Like it's, it's a huge mistake that the Grizzlies lost that game. Yeah. Which that's what people don't understand. Even with LeBron's finals record, if you look at his overall series record, beating LeBron in the playoffs it's, is hard. Yeah. Especially before the finals. It's, yeah. It's even harder impossible. before the finals. I mean, he's gone to 10. <laughs> yeah. Eight straight but, times. Yeah. Which so, is so funny with that. Dylan and when Brooks. he went and then when he was fully healthy in the West, he went to the finals. So right, in 2020, this first year. History playoff. tells us that there's a good chance that they're going to make the finals. If healthy. If healthy. Yeah, if everybody stays healthy. Historically, there isn't. It's it's almost historically. Because you got to think, before, when he was on the eight-year run, they were healthy. Right. And then he went to the Lakers, was hurt. That's when That was the ninth year. Well, they weren't, like, the year that, in 2015, they weren't healthy. But he was that's good. What I'm saying. But he was better then, and he could carry – carry teams like that but no that's not my point he can't do that my now. point is he went to a straight yeah they ba- didn't go basically he was fully hurt. healthy they he's, that he's, he's on basically fully healthy he's never not made the finals in yeah. the last 10 years yeah so history tells us that if they say healthy there yeah exactly they're probably gonna make the finals all right moving over into the heat and bucks um if i'm a right, bucks fan i'm terrified <laughs> So there I'm has terrified. been four players in the history of the NBA to average, or not to average. There's been four players in the history of the NBA to have 30 plus points, 10 plus assists, and three or more steals. 
in multiple games, okay? So we got LeBron James, Michael Jordan. Who are the other two? Russ and Jimmy. Yeah, Russ and Jimmy. Yeah. Man, we can't even f- pretend. All right, yeah, we, we, we said that yesterday. Pretend. Trying to make a clue about it. We said it. that yesterday, but I did guess LeBron and Jordan, which is funny because if you look at any historical stat, it's always LeBron James, Michael Jordan, and some random dude that yeah, just went Bob crazy. McAdoo. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, it is weird. Like, every single stat they bring up, it's always LeBron and Michael Jordan yeah. when it comes to playoffs or whatever. Yeah. And that's the scoring. Then it's like, well, it So, Heat Bucks, what you got there? Uh, I still got the Bucks in six. I think that the Heat will get another game at home. Um, the scary thing is, though, obviously Giannis went out with a back injury. Back injuries are tough. Yeah. Like, that locks up your body, and especially someone that relies so much on his athleticism. That's a scary thing. And the Heat are going to be super physical. They're going to knock him down every single time he comes in, the, uh, comes in the paint. And if you watch, like, the first quarter in that game, every single bucket he got was grinding because they just threw body after body at him. So if I'm a Bucks fan, I'm definitely nervous. But 100%. I, but Chris and, and and the role players stepped up that game too. And, and you got, and obviously you're playing Jimmy Butler, who's in the playoffs, is remarkable. Yeah. Eric Spolstra. Yeah. Um, Kyle Lowry. The bet. good thing, yeah, Kyle Lowry's been playing well. Heroes in the play. That's, that's, that's why what I was about I think to say. Going six. Hero, Hero's broken hand is very tough. They are significantly better with Tyler here on the floor. I mean, they're losing a 20, 20 game point score. So really. Are they, what's the plus minus difference like, when he's on the court? He's like six you know? points better or something. Like okay. he's very he makes them a lot better. And he's just a smart he's a smart defender. But um yeah, that's why I think it's still going six because I'm Middleton had like thirty five last night though. He did good. So that's a good sign for the Bucks, but if I'm the Bucks, I'm not gonna push Giannis, really. Giannis? Unless I desperately have to. Uh yeah. I'm holding him off until at least like if I'm you're letting him play. I'm just saying, like, playing. yeah, I'm letting him play. I'm just saying, like, I'm taking it easy for sure. I don't know why, for whatever reason. Oh, okay, but uh, yeah. So, are you good on that, or do you want to put this on five minutes? He did, I guess. Oh, I was gonna say this isn't a five. The five minute one is Suns. Let's go. Uh, sure. Let's go, Kings Warriors for that second two and a half. Um, this is super exciting. This was a great matchup just for like eye candy because. They're like two great offenses going at it. There's going to be so much movement, so many three-pointers. It's going to be the most fast-paced series. I mean, it's going to be 120, 130 points a game. So, that's and going to it be was. fun to watch. Yeah, what an amazing basketball game. What an amazing playoff debut by Darren yeah. Fox. Every single time the Warriors did anything, Darren Fox just pulled up a three. I mean, yeah. that's why the Kings played a great, great, great second half. And it took a lot. Yeah, it was it was really fun to watch. But I still think the Warriors. Uh, yeah, I still think the Warriors experience. Um, just Steph and Clay in the playoffs, they're gonna get it done in six. But I really, yeah, I think the series is great, and I'm glad that the Kings got a playoff win at home. Yeah, but I, I still mean, got the Warriors. St- Steph was at the post game, literally laughing. Yeah, like, Steph, Steph's not worried. If so you're much. messing, if you're messing with Steph and he starts yeah. laughing. You shouldn't have messed with Steph. And Steph didn't even play that well. He did not have a good game. He played a little bit better in the second half, but he did not. Well, have he a good missed game. the game winner. I saw yeah. that. Uh, Clay Clay had a bad first half. The guy right before him also missed the game winner in the corner. What? What? <laughs> For who? Oh, I don't know. But. Yeah. The no, they call a timeout to get the ball. They shot free throws, call a timeout with 2.6 seconds left, and then Steph got the shot. Yeah. Uh, well, way, yeah. Right before they shot the free throws then, there was a guy who Yeah, maybe so. Um, maybe but, so. Uh, yeah, I, I, think the, I think the Warriors are going to win in six. Yeah, I like the Warriors in six. Before the game, I said that the, I liked the Clippers and – not the Clippers, the Kings in game one. Uh, just because the Warriors definitely struggled through the end of the season, not as far as just wins. They are obviously on a roll. Um, but it's hard to win that many games straight, and every game was a must-win for the last five games. Yeah. So when that's the case, and then you have a little bit of break, the Kings are rested. They haven't even been playing their starters for a few games. It just seemed like a trap game. So I liked the Kings in game one, but I like the Warriors. But I will say this about the Kings. the Sabonis played awful. He played absolutely terrible. <laughs> so if he can just get any production, like his normal production, that's going to be a huge win for the Kings. So 
I don't know, yeah. man. This I yeah, still got it's worries a w in six. if Sabonis plays yeah. bad and used to win. Yeah, I still got worries in six, but uh, but the Kings can make a run. Let's go ahead and move over into the Clippers Sun series. So obviously, right off rip, Russell Westbrook three for eighteen, no three, three for, for 19, nineteen from the field, which was obviously and took the game winning yeah. shot. It seemed like Russell Westbrook's offense was so bad that it was catastrophic to the Clippers' success. And somehow he found a way to be invaluable to the team. I mean, incredible block. Throws it off Devin Booker's knee. Incredible I mean, it's unbelievable. Steals. I, the defensively, Suns, the Suns, defensively, he was outstanding. Like, every single time, he just kept baiting Suns players to get past him, and he'd poke the ball. I mean, it happened, like, eight times where he let Devin Booker or Kate. I mean, he had, like, what? He had a block on Katie and, like, two steals because he would just let them drive past him, and then he would, like, hit the ball out of their hands as they went past him. And, it, like, they just kept doing that over and over again. And, yeah, he made the sa- game-saving block and threw it off Booker. Yeah. And then Booker started crying about how he hit his hand. Yeah, so Booker. The Suns just cry. They cry. Yeah. They're criers. Like. They're a bunch of. I agree. The, the, sun, the Suns are literally. The Suns tend to be like cry, but they, yeah. they tend to whine. Like yes. as a team collectively, yes. they yes. tend to whine. Yes. Outside of Kevin Durant, who's new. Um, yeah, Kevin Durant doesn't really do that. But, you know, Chris Paul and, and Devin. Devin Booker was talking so much trash, dude. That's, they remind me so much of the Grizzlies, dude. Like, I don't know if you've ever seen that clip of LeBron talking to Cameron Payne when Cameron Payne was talking trash. Like, you haven't done anything. You haven't won a title. So stop talking. You haven't arrived yet. Yeah. You don't have the privilege to do that. And nobody takes you seriously. And if you're Kevin Durant and you joined this team midseason, who's already an established team, won 64 games a couple years ago, and the Clippers don't have – Paul George and they have Russ on that team and you don't get it done. I mean, there ain't nothing worse than that. There's nothing worse than that. At some point, we have got to hold this dude accountable like we hold everybody else. At some point we have to. No, it's true. And this is yesterday was I won't even talk about you. That's what I'm saying. It's yeah. And this is the thing. Um Oh, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> I well, I, I think we're, basically what you were saying and where you were going with it as far as I can understand is with LeBron. And any, Steph. Any time. And, yeah, and Steph, I guess, yeah. I mean, think about when Steph uh, lost the 2016 finals. People were saying, is Kyrie Irving better than Steph Curry after dude just won the United MVP? I mean, like, people were hard on Steph. But for some reason, when a dude that we say is a, at least a top 15 player ever gets traded mid-year, like – we think other players have more yeah. pressure to win a title. No, it exactly, doesn't make exactly. any sense. It baffles me that nobody applies pressure to Kevin <laughs> yeah. Durant to win this title. It's ridiculous. There's more pressure on Jason Tatum and the Celtics yes. than there it's, is it's ins- on Kevin Durant. And, and it is mind-blowing. <laughs> yeah. And another thing is, it's my. It's like we give him so much grace. Like He didn't attempt a field goal in the third quarter. He didn't attempt a field goal in the first quarter. But we say like, and he he had a good game. He had a good game. But we're like, but he's uh he's getting all these assists and stuff. But to other players, we're like, why isn't he taking shots? Like obviously, uh, he doesn't like take. He doesn't thrive in these moments, or he doesn't want the ball in these moments. But for KD, we just give other excuses. I'll say it doesn't this: doesn't make any sense. The closer of that game was Kawhi Leonard. <laughs> Unbelievable! Yeah. That dude just plays forty games. Yeah. You may as well just build a team around Kawhi. Win 40 games in the regular just season. Just insert him in the playoffs. And then just in the playoffs, just be like, all right, Kawhi. Because Kawhi, Kawhi does not make teams worse because he's very good off the ball. He's a plus defender. So, like, he's kind of like KD where you can plug him into a lot of different teams. So, you, like, you can have teams, him not play. Right. And then them be successful once it's playoff time. Yeah. I mean, dude went crazy last game. but Because think about how often it was that – Russell Westbrook just handed the ball off to him, or whoever at the top of the key handed the ball off to him, and then they put four guys and got yeah. out of the way, and he like, just did whatever. Yeah, and then they doubled him. He passed yeah. out, get the ball back, back one on one, and then he and, and Kevin Durant was guarding him a lot on those plays, too. And Clay, and he yeah, and Clay, yeah, Clay, Clay was guarding him. Clay Thompson was guarding him. I'm talking about Kawhi Leonard. Oh, not Clay Thompson. Yeah. what's his name? Devin Booker. Uh, yeah, I don't know. My what bad. Go- <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> uh, that was like you with. Uh, what game was that? What, what did I ask you about? And you just said, I don't know, but <laughs> we only have 25 seconds. Okay, sorry. Um, but yeah, Devin Booker was guarding him as well. Yeah, so he was making those shots in Katie's faces, which was a joy to see um, <laughs> them guarding each other. I love that. That was great. Um, they, they're they fighting for the battle of the basement. Like, who's going to be the third best player in this generation? Who? 
uh, Kawhi and Kevin Durant. So Steph's two. <laughs> yeah, Steph's two, and LeBron's one. That's solidified. But they can fight for that, which I it's enjoyable. <laughs> oh, by the way, did you see that uh, Jalen Hurts? <laughs> I don't really like that one. Did you see that Jalen Hurts signed for the biggest contract in NFL history? Oh, I. I Wait, what? Oh, uh, what did I tell you? What did I tell you? What was I saying back when NFL season was going on and all that Jalen Hurts should they pay him? I said you should pay this man as much as any NFL QB in the league because if you look at it, Russell Wilson's making a crazy amount of money, trash. Aaron Rodgers coming off a bad season, making fifty million a year, trash. You have a dude in Jalen Hurts that gets better every single year. We've never seen somebody improve passing like this in NFL history. Like, name me a player that has improved that much in one year passing. He's great on and off the field. He's a great leader. You know he's going to take care of himself. You know he's going to keep working hard. He's a great ambassador for your franchise. That man deserves the biggest contract in NFL history right now. And then Lamar's sitting at home. Like, what the heck is going on? Yeah, but he's only played out of the last two seasons. Uh, yeah. He's played no, twenty four games. A, uh, he's played a. He's twi- He's played twenty four games last two years. So yeah, a year and a half. Twelve twelve games a year. I think it's it's <laughs> there's seventeen games in a year now. I think he should be paid though. I just don't understand. I don't understand. I think he should be too. But I like look I, at the guys who are getting paid. I don't get why he's not being paid. Like, I agree, but there I, are some franchises that should be desperately paying him. But I don't know how what he's been offered. It's not it's not been leaked what he's been offered. Yeah. Wait, I thought the Ravens like I some the Ravens was leaked. Not that I've I thought seen. he only got like 170 million guaranteed from the Ravens. That's fine. I would take it. I think Lamar should take that. Yeah, what do you think you should think you should get paid? It's because I think you should get paid as much Sean as like Watson Deshaun Watson, but he's ruining the market. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, but the thing is, it's just because there's like he even said it before that the Browns are such a desperate team. They went to desperate measures. Yeah, yeah, but the Ravens don't have to do that. But the Ravens might be desperate after signing giving. Odell, 16 million guaranteed. Because that tells me you're trying to make a Super Bowl push signing him. That tells me you're trying to keep Lamar Jackson. Mm-hmm. So if you don't sign him, it's a failure. Go? You don't want Odell getting 16 million guaranteed and then some young quarterback that you know you're not going to win with. How much is he getting? 16 mil, one year, 16 mil. 16? Yeah. yeah, it's pretty good. So that That's a that really good. Get to go on for a dude game. that just came off of ACL, obviously you only give him one year. But. Right, but if you're keeping him out of your division – out of your league, was it an offensive play, or was it a defensive signing? No, to you me, want to give them. To me, though. they. The, they what if right Lamar before. just signs another one year? What if they're like? It's not signing another one year. He's already the on the franchise tag yeah. for thirty-five mil. Yeah. So maybe Which the Saquon Ravens didn't sign his. May, yeah. Maybe the Ravens are like, listen, we're gonna run it back one more year with Odell as a weapon, and then if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. I, that's the smartest. That's play worst for case the scenario Ravens. for Lamar. No, I'm saying that's best for the Ravens. I think. Yeah, it's 100%, but yeah. it's the worst case scenario for Lamar. Uh, let's go over into tonight's predictions. Game one, we got Warriors and Kings. Game well, two. Game, I meant game one yeah. of the list. Game, okay, game, game one of the list. Game, game two, two for the yeah. series. I got Warriors. I like the Warriors, yeah. yeah. The Kings won game one. Yeah. Uh, it took a lot out of them. I like the Warriors to come back and win. It's not It's not often that you beat a vet team like the Warriors twice. Reigning champs, so I like the Warriors yeah. game. Warriors game will, split. will split. Uh, sure. And then the second game of the night is – well, actually, I reversed those. But the first game of the night, um, or game two, Sixers Nets. So. Sixers. Yeah, I, I like the Sixers in that one as well. It's it's still in Philly as well. So yeah. they're it's lethal tough. at home too. All right, guys. So we didn't do this before. Hopefully, it doesn't really matter that we're already get one game in. I don't think it will. But we're gonna start with our Western Conference brackets. Western Conference brackets. I mean, honestly, the game one. Didn't hey, by the way, change my what, uh, Oh, sweet. I'm pretty sure in the podcast last. I'm pretty sure yeah. in the podcast Kapuska. last week I said I had the Clippers. Now, I was thinking more with my heart. Yeah. I dislike just, the sun. I'll but. just put, forgot to post these. Yeah. All right. All right. So, uh, NBA playoff prediction starting in the Western Conference. The one versus eight. Give me Denver. I like it in four or five games. After that, Phoenix, LA. Make sure you say how, what n- game you got it. I just said five Denver. games. You said four or five games. All right. Let me restart. Denver uh. in five or Denver in four. All right. So, are we in the clips now? Yeah. yeah. NBA playoff predictions. We're going to start over in the Western Conference. I'm going to start with the Nuggets. I like the Nuggets to beat the T-Wolves in five games. Past that, we got Suns, Clippers. Although, uh, after seeing game one, it's going to be tight. Actually, should I not even say that? 
It's up to you. All right. You just said we were going to put for God's yeah, purposes. Suns, Clippers, give me the Suns in six. Um, beyond that, Sacramento and Golden State. Again, I'm going to take Golden State in six. And then lastly, the sight to see, we got Lakers, Memphis. I'm going to take the Lakers in five games. I knew you were going to say that. I'm going to take the Lakers in five games. All right. All right. My After turn. that, semifinals. Right? Or do you not want to yeah, do that? Yeah, semifinals. Okay. Is it's up? To, yeah, we can. So you want me to do my whole? Just do our first rounds, and then we can do our semifinals after. Let me just. Do the yeah, whole yeah, thing. I'm gonna do the whole round. All right. So I said those. Um. After that, Denver, Phoenix. I like Phoenix in seven. Hold on, hold on. Should do you think we should do it where you ask me or I ask you? No. And then okay. That's It'll pop up on the screen. Clips. It'll be like. Show it. Um. Denver and Phoenix. After that, in the. Okay, going on to the conference semis, Denver and Phoenix. Give me Den. Oh, actually, no. Yeah, okay, give me Phoenix and seven. Oh, you picked Phoenix over Clippers. Yeah, I got Phoenix over Clippers, and I got Phoenix over now Nuggets. So give me, give me. A, which do you think if Phoenix beats the Clippers, they don't beat the Nuggets? I would think the Phoenix beats the Nuggets. Yeah. All right. No, I agree with you on that. One, two, three, go, and both said your pick. That sounds stupid. Yeah. Oh, it does. <laughs> yeah, it <is. laughs> All right. Uh, I got Phoenix <laughs> over Denver, and then after that, the Lakers and Warriors. I think the Warriors are going to be pretty tired after the series. I like the Lakers to win that one in seven. So that one's going the distance as well. That brings my Western Conference Finals to the Suns, LeBron winning and Lakers. Golden, LeBron winning in Golden State again in Game Seven. Yeah. <laughs> that that brings me the Suns and the Lakers. Give me the Suns in that series. I think they're in six games after a seven-game series versus Golden State. I think the Lakers are going to be gassed. So, I like the Suns to make it out of the West. I hate that. All right, here you go. That's only because you don't like the Suns. I don't, I don't think – I don't That's buy the Suns. Okay. Scroll down. Yeah. There you go. All right, so my Western Conference predictions leading up to the finals. Uh, Denver, Minnesota, I got Denver in five. Phoenix and the Clippers, I got Clippers in six. Sacramento, Golden State, I got Golden State in six. And Memphis and the Lakers, I got Lakers in six. Going to the semifinals with Denver and the Clippers, I got the Clippers in six because I believe Paul George will be back as well in that series. Then I got the Lakers beating Golden State in six games. They play Golden State really well. They just do. They play them really well. LeBron plays them really well. Um, and then in the Western Conference Finals, Lakers, Clippers. I got Lakers winning in seven. Basically, all home games for that. But I got the Lakers winning in seven going to the finals. Battle of LA. Yeah, Battle of LA that we never got. And who would have guessed we'd get it in 2023? <laughs> that's crazy. All right, so that's all for that one. Those are our Western Conference predictions. Uh, go check us out on TikTok and Instagram for our Eastern Conference. Um, those will be out tomorrow. So... Now we're going to do, going back to a previous segment, if you guys do follow us on those platforms, you guys saw us do the segment of rate, how important it is for these players to win the finals. So we're going to get into that clip. So, all right, we're going to rate how important it is for these players to win the NBA finals this year. First up, Russell Westbrook. Seven. Uh, he's not the lead guy on the on the team, but it does erase like the stigma around him that if he's on your team, he's a detriment and like he actually can win. So. That would be good for him. Giannis Antetokounmpo. Six. You're getting – okay, so, like, it's hard to win NBA championships. It takes – like, you – I don't know, man. Like, LeBron won two with the Heat and this on these years of his prime. Giannis got to get him when he can. Jimmy Butler. Seven. I mean, I don't think his legacy is really going to be dependent on championships. Like, people already know what he can do in the playoffs. And then James Harden. 10. That's a 10. Like, James Harden, if he wins a title, he solidified himself as the third best shooting guard ever. I think he people are going to put him over D-Wade. That's huge. That's a huge yeah. statement. Hopefully that gets clicks. Holy yeah. cow. No, all I'm right. serious, though. I think that people would put him over D-Wade. All right, boys, ladies and gentlemen, that's all for episode number 5-7 of the Good Point Bell Podcast. As you guys know, my name is Caden. It's my little bro, Cam. Don't sleep. I was just seeing if you did it. All right, check us out on Instagram at Good Point Bro, on TikTok at Good Point Dot Bro, and as you guys know, on YouTube at the Good Point Bro Podcast. Check out our second channel, Good Point Bro Picks, hosted by yours truly. 
Jamie, aka Boss, aka Boss Master Fresh, aka Adam. Uh, so that's all for that. All right, it's been fun. We'll see you in episode fifty-eight. Might do a second one this week just because the playoffs are crazy. We might have more to talk about by then, so it'll be fun. Uh, stick around, check out. Turn, go ahead and hit that little bell just in case we do post a second one, so you guys can see it right when it comes out. There's a couple of you guys I know that watch all these. Um, so yeah, Josh, if you're hearing this, say. I like bananas in the comments. Say, I like bananas. If I don't see you saying, I like bananas, I know you didn't watch all the way through. Sounds, sounds like a plan. All right. That's all, guys. See you in the Peace. next one. Peace.